Ever since Battle for Middle-earth was released in the mid-2000s, the series has captivated Tolkienites the world over. A truly legendary video game series that stood the test of time and is rightfully held dear by many people to this day. High on that sweet, sweet nostalgia, we decided to have a crack at bringing some of the buildings you can create for Mordor and Isengard to life on the tabletop in 28mm scale. Our aim was to stay faithful to the design of the game and only make a few changes that would improve the functionality and gameplay. Without further ado, I'm Joe from Windrush Wargamers. And I'm Nick from Windrush Wargamers. And here's how we built Battle for Middle-Earth terrain for Middle-Earth SBG. First up is the Furnace. In-game, this is a primary way for the Isengard faction to gain resources. It consists of a tall smoking chimney, a mould to cast the iron bars, and a platform so the orc workers can potter around. The material we used for the bases on all of our buildings was foam board. This meant it could easily be cut and beveled with simple tools, and because it was white we could sketch out the layout beforehand. I wanted the furnace to glow from the inside, so I implanted some flickering tea lights. I did this first so I could draw the rest of the building around it and make sure it scaled correctly. The tall chimney started life as a simple plastic bottle. The bottom was cut off and two holes were added near the base with a craft knife. Then the sides were sanded down which would help the modelling compound adhere to it later on. I primed the inside and hot glued it in place. Now on most of the pieces we needed some kind of wooden planks. We could have made them ourselves but seeing as we were crafting everything else we wanted the simplest option possible and so we turned to the Goblin Town Terrain Kit. This kit gave all the wood texture we'd ever need and also the skull debris helped the pieces feel a bit more lived in. Once I picked up a suitable piece, I could simply trim it down to the correct size using a rotary tool and fix the beams in place with plastic glue. The walkway was then hot glued to the base, then I could turn my attention back to the chimney. Now the furnace was starting to take shape, but the top of the chimney was bothering me. In the game it has these jagged spikes, but the bottle was obviously rounded. So to replicate these spikes, I used my Stanley knife to appropriately carve off some offcuts of foam board. These were then masking taped into a rough cone shape and then hot glued in place. Foam board was again utilised to make the iron bar mould. The final detail was the handrail made from very thin balsa wood. Saruman must have had a very thorough health and safety policy indeed. Duty of care now. To add the ground modulations and the texture to the chimney, it was going to need modelling compound. But due to the water in the modelling compound, I wanted to avoid any warping. So all the exposed foam had a smothering of Mod Podge sealant mixed with black paint. This was needed for all the subsequent terrain pieces also. When that was fully dry, sand texture was added to the base using PVA and cotton wool was glued in place for the smoke. And here's what it looks like after painting. We're done with this one. Another building all finished up. Moving on to my first entry now, the troll cage. Yeah, the cage for our trolls is ready. As you can see from the screenshot, the troll cage has spiked palisades and a square hutch made of timber. The interior has hay carpeting the floors and a chained up troll being tormented before it is set loose on the enemy. We didn't want to use a games workshop troll as this would require the piece to be much larger and it also costs a pretty penny, so to save money and resources we use this instead. A troll from the Dark Alliance War Troll set. This is a not LATR, 172nd scale game, and the trolls have a much more squad appearance which is perfect for them. After sketching out the basic layout on the foam board I started prepping Mr. Troll. I clipped his mace off and sawed off his arm. This was so I could change the pose to make it resemble him struggling against his restraints. Speaking of restraints, these were again pilfered from the Goblin Town kit. To save paint and get a more natural shape, we used real branches for this. These are cut down from a fig tree in our mum's garden. Cheers mum! First, we sawed them down to size using the troll for reference. Next came the laborious task of sharpening them into points for the palisades. We started by using a Stanley knife to cut it to shape, and then refining the point with a craft knife. We used a pencil sharpener and some of the thinner stakes. 
In order to stop mold from growing on them, I slapped on a matte varnish before I hot glued them in place. Moving on to the hutch now, the base for this was foam board, but we stuck down wooden dowels to resemble a panel of logs. Before the hutch was hot glued in place, the ground was covered in texture paste, and the surrounding surface was based and painted in the same way as the furnace. The floor of the cage itself was then covered in hay flock. After gluing the completed troll in place, we just had to add some blood and gore to make the cage feel more lived in. And here's what it looks like all finished up. Put the trolls in this here cage! Next up is the Slaughterhouse. The Slaughterhouse has a raised platform with a hut on top for butchering the great beasts of Gorgoroth. I knew immediately this would need to be stretched out slightly because there would be no room for the models to stand and fight. The basic outline was so large it took two pieces of foam board hot glued together to make the base. Then, as before, the structure including the walkways and the ramps was glued together using plastic glue and fixed into place with hot glue. Another change I made to enhance the gameplay was to extend the ramps and walkways. This made sure that models could stand and fight and the incline was more gradual and therefore they were less likely to slide down. For the hut, I used some spare tent terrain I had lying around. The only alteration I had to make was sanding down any unwanted detailing with a rotary tool. Then I hot glued them together and added some details like these spikes made of whittled down balsa wood. I then used the classic technique of paper mache for adding some texture to the roof. Simply ripped up a few pieces of paper, dunked them in PVA and slapped them down on the surface, before sealing with that one to one mixture of black paint and Mod Podge once again. The last step was then to add some texture to the walls. Although the game has a fairly muted colour palette for this hut, I wanted it to stand out from the wooden platform, so I used a red colour on the roof. The meat rack was made from balsa wood, a huge wooden dowel in the middle, and bent paper clips for the hooks. Now with all the components finished and assembled, the slaughterhouse was based and painted. Keep the wargs in this warg pit! This is the Isengard warg pit. The pit has a similar shape to the troll cage but with a small tower instead of the hutch. After sketching out the rough design I started work on the tower. Flipping over the Goblin Town terrain sprue, you can see that the underside has a more uniform pattern. The squares for which would make it easier to cut with a rotary tool. These were hot glued in place, with the floor finished off with some off cuts of balsa wood. From here is much the same story as the troll cage. The palisades were hot glued in place, and hayflock and viscera were added for flavour. There's the new pick to breed our wargs! We can spawn orcs from this new pit! Our last entry is the orc pit. Now I'm sure as soon as you see this pool of goo or hear the mere mention of the orc pit, this legendary sound clip comes to mind. Ah, a new horde of orcs! Fundamentally, the orc pit is a big pool with steps leading up to the rim 
and a couple of caves for the newly spawned orcs to jog out of. For the base of the pool I used this cheap paper bowl. To give it some elevation I attached it to a spare spray can lid I had lying around. Then I glued the lid to some cardboard. I then used the classic terrain building trick for making hills by connecting the base to the bowl with many strips of masking tape, being sure to leave openings for the caves. This would not only be accurate to the game design but also block line of sight for playing SPG. When the masking tape monstrosity was finished, I glued it to the foam board base and began work on the steps. These were simply foam board glued to the exterior of the pit, being supported on the other side with some cardboard. And once it all dried, I was able to trim the rim of the cardboard and begin the modelling compound stage. On this build in particular, the modelling compound really made this piece come to life. The last step before painting was to coat the stairs and the surface of the pool with texture paste. I wanted the gunge, the orc soup if you will, to stand out, so I chose a bright green. For this, I used hexray flame and clear PVA. As it was PVA based, it took a long time to dry and when it did, it shrunk considerably. If you are replicating this at home, you may want to add several layers. I then used aqua magic to give the impression of ripples. And with that, the orc pit is complete. We're finished digging the orc pit. Ah, a new horde of orcs. We really enjoyed making this terrain and we'd love to hear what you think about them in the comments below. I personally like how large they are and they can fill out a table really easily. My favourite feature is that you can use the beast as environmental hazards while you play. If you get too close to the troll, then he can hurl you. Get with an ninja of the warg and he'll pounce on you. And if the great beast of Gorgoroth gets loose, the nearest model should get ready for a monstrous charge. We've been Windrush Wargamers, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more Middle Earth SPG content like terrain builds, conversion guides and our recommendations for proxies. Hope to catch you in the next one.